Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about bringing the tool inside of Unreal. So here I'm already having Unreal open and my digital asset is already available here. So this is the exact same asset that we built before. I'm just going to drag and drop this into Unreal and see if we actually have something by default. It's good to know to see if we actually need to do actually more work to have it working or not. So before we start, make sure you have Houdini Engine here installed and available and then you're good to go. So let's just drag and drop the tool in our scene and see if we can get something. Now here by default, I just have the classic uh, Houdini icon here. So it means that the tool is not necessarily outputting any data. So let's look at our interface and we should have the same interface or parameters that we had in Houdini. So we had our folders, but we can also see our inputs. This is something that we need to change. So here we have our input one, and I just need to probably rename this to better naming here. So it's now just sub network input. So we have one and two. So number one was actually the cable or the curve and number two was actually a collision. So we need to plug in a cable or a curve. And in this case, we can actually switch this from geometry to curve. And by default, we will actually now have this curve. And now my tool is actually working or ready to be used. So we now have this single curve over here and you could see that my cables are not necessarily around this curve. So I could maybe build some changes to, to be a bit more at the center. Uh, but normally if I would go here and for example, add more, that should all work now. So that all works nicely. So let's go back to five, for example, maybe we can increase the size here a bit. And if we grab the curve, so if we grab the points, we should be able to move these. Uh, and you can see this updates quite quickly. We can also, for example, say, let's uh, let the curve go here in this direction. And maybe I need to build some settings to maybe smooth out the corners a bit, since this is not necessarily like a Bezier curve. It's just like it's a linear curve. So maybe if I do a little smoothing or, or, or subdivision on, on the curve, that might smooth things a bit more out. So that works. And you can also do a simulation, so we can enable simulation. And now we have a simulation here as well. It's of course going through the floor since I'm not attaching the floor. I can see some weird issues with scaling over here. So I will need to look into that as well. And let's also now test our collision. So I can actually grab what I'm actually seeing here as my collider. So let's go over my second input. And let's now go into a world outliner. So we are picking something from the world and we're going to say start selection and we're going to select the floor, uh, the stairs here, these blocks and maybe test one as well and say use selection. So by default, it might recalculate or we might just need to hit reset. So let's just hit reset and it should now should actually collide with the world. And this is the result. So overall, the tool is actually working uh, without any adjustments we just made it perfectly working for houdini we drag and drop it here and it just works so the only thing i want to look into is of course the scaling issue so maybe there is some weird scaling values going on or maybe i need to clamp certain scaling but we can see that this works pretty well so really interesting cables for example over here looks really good so let's uh, take a deep dive into this now there are multiple ways of, of debugging so we can go back to Houdini and we can do our changes there. But we can also go here to Houdini Engine and we can do a session sync. So let's try that. So session sync will actually be able to pull the data from Unreal into Houdini. So we can directly see what, what are the issues I need to fix or what is a certain situation that is not working. So if your session sync is live, you should see that, that there will be a global node. So if this node is here, that means everything is working. So the only thing left to do is actually go back to Unreal here and just uh, rebuild this network. So after you, after you did your uh, rebuild, it will actually now be fine in Houdini. So here in Houdini, uh, we should see uh, this results. So we should see our cables. So this is all the data that it's sort of like importing. So let's go here to this network. So here we have then uh, or inputs, and then we have our actual cable node. So here we might need to hit reset 
and now we're actually getting that same data so i'm gonna just right click on this node and we're gonna say allow editing of contents so you can see that this uh, lock is now red and this actually allows us to go inside here and start editing so now i can visually see the data from unreal again into here so it's way easier for debugging and finding out on what went wrong so here i can see what went wrong so here i have the exact same issue with these like swollen cables so to find out maybe what's went wrong let's just check here in our simulation settings so if i don't do the simulation i have the correct data so if i just disable this i don't see any weird cabling scaling going on it's only happening when i have the simulation so it's probably somewhere here that we need to double check what's going on so let's check the vellum configuration and if you remember we did here uh, the scaling of, of the cable so we can see that here is something going on so this is like very large for some reason in the corners so what i noticed here with this issue here is that if i maybe go here and view this cable alone that we have this points with like quite high spacing in between here and that's sort of what's happening so in this configuration node it's also automatically sort of getting those distances uh, between each point so that's something to uh, to keep in mind here so what if we do a resample here and add points you will actually see that it will actually go back to what it was before so now we're sort of like filling this so if we now view this you can see that this is now consistent so there are a couple ways on how i could try to fix this as you could see i could just place a resample uh, but i'm quite interested in maybe just trying out to see what if our input curve here was already like a bit sort of like smoothed out in the corners so in our resample that we did the first resample if we set the treat polygons as subdivision we will automatically have a smoothed uh, curves here which is also a bit more natural for the cables so let's check if that uh, sort of helped and as you can see uh, this is definitely helping so let's uh, stick with that uh, reset simulation and now we should have a decent result so now we have that cable now also let's go back here maybe disable the simulation let's say you have a lot of cables and this is not necessarily around the curve if i view my input curve it's like on the side here so what we need to do with this network since this is the shape we need to probably center this a bit more in the center of the world so we're going to use the match size node and this will actually correct it a bit more in the center of the world so this should normally as you could see so we have our middle curve and the curves around it so that should probably be a bit better so those are a couple tweaks and as you can see i can play around with multiple things here since again we can quickly also always go back to unreal and check what's going on so we can say simulate again here and this is then my simulation looks pretty good to me now of course important here is to actually select your tool and uh, hit save so save my cable tool otherwise if we close this uh, we might actually lose those changes we made you can actually also save this scene so if you just go here and do uh, save you can actually save this scene with the data from unreal so it will actually also save here those uh, input shapes now going back here to unreal and as you can see it's working as expecting so we have really nice cables here laying down in this area so now I can uh, grab the curve again and I could, for example, move it a bit more into this direction and it's going to automatically maybe do a recalculation here or we could hit reset and you could see that it's moving up. So of course, like for example, this cube is not marked as collider. So if I would move it uh, more uh, over here like so, it's not going to take that as a collision as you could see so i'll have to add those things to the collision tab and layer so we can create these cables 
And again, we can also, of course, play around with the optimization options. If you're not happy with how many polygons we are spending here, we can fine tune this a bit more. We can maybe enable the wire wireframe view here. We can just check if we are on the lower poly side of things. And that's almost it for the Unreal part. So the last thing that I want to talk about here is automatically assigning a material. So in my project here, I have, for example, a very basic material as demonstration here. So what we can do is we can right click and we can get a copy reference here. So we are basically just getting the path where it's stored. So here we're just going to get that path automatically. So we're going to jump back into the session sync. So I still had everything open here and we can go into our tool and all the way at the last step, we're going to type in Unreal Material. We also have it available for Unity as well. It will be the same workflow. So here we have this node. So it's basically just assigning a attribute. And here we're going to copy paste the path that I got from uh, that right click on the asset. So again, it's just saying where this material is being located. So now if I would go to Unreal, we should see that automatically now we have this material. So this is a way of automatically assigning materials. You can of course do multiple material IDs if you want that. So for example, now I have a yellow material. So let's say the smaller cables need to be yellow. So I can again get a reference and in Houdini here, I can now, instead of placing this at the last part, let's do this before the merging. So I can design multiple materials here on this part. So this is the big cable, which has the basic rubber one that we're going to copy paste the material node. And here I'm going to copy paste my material yellow, see so the rubber yellow. So now we are signing a different material over here. So let's go back and press save. And as you could see, now we have two different materials. So we have the dark rubber and the yellow uh, rubber material. So that's how we could play around with materials. You can do more materials, like you can have each single cable material. You can also do, for example, vertex colors on the cable and things like that. But that's it for this video. So this video mainly just covers about just grabbing that asset bringing it into Unreal, and as you can see, it didn't take that much work. And it's also useful for debugging, as you saw, like we had a few issues, we just uh, immediately linked up with Session Sync, and we figured out what we needed to do. So that was it for this video. Next video, we're going to cover the trim texturing sheet workflow on this, and to wrap this up. So thanks for watching.